Hey guys, in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own drum kit, a custom drum kit in Ableton Live. So the first thing you need is what Ableton calls a drum rack. A drum rack is a device that's made to hold a ton of different samples or instruments. It's essentially really good for uh, doing drums, but you can do a whole lot of other things with it too. But today we're just gonna focus on the drum aspect of it. So first of all, in your browser on the left-hand side here, you click on drums. And the very, oh, the, I was going to say the very first, but the second item here is an empty drum rack. By the way, it's also in instruments. If you go into instruments and uh, um, it's right there, but we're going to go to it through in the drum section. So click on drums. There's a list of all the drum kits that I have on my computer from all the different uh, packs from uh, ableton.com. But the drum rack is what I'm interested in. And I'm going to load it into an empty MIDI track and there is an empty drum rack. Actually, before I do that, so here I'll show you, here's a, a drum rack that's not empty. This is the Acoustified kit. And you can see here on the left, there's actually uh, slots for 128 different samples or instruments or something. And in this drum kit, they're only using 16. This lowest one here, this Kick Acoustified, this one corresponds to, as it says down in the bottom left corner, this corresponds to the key C1 on your keyboard, or if you're using a grid pad instrument, uh, the bottom corner, um, the bottom corner of the pad instrument. Um, so an empty drum rack, I'm just gonna load it in here, looks like that. Um, it's got nothing in it, and you can see it defaults from C1 up to D sharp too. By the way, if you just click anywhere on this um, grid on the left, you can see you can choose different sections of it but we're of course going to use the default section there so what we're going to do is we're going to load a sample or a sound into each of these 16 uh, grids we don't need to use all 16 today we'll see how we go and you can see uh, again in the bottom left corner here when I put my mouse over one of these it makes a suggestion as to what should go in there and this suggestion is based on uh, just general convention all the drum kits, all MIDI drum kits in Ableton and in most other applications use the same um, the same format of drums. So you always get a bass drum in C1, a, a side stick or some other percussion instrument in C sharp one, D1 you always get, it says acoustic snare, but let's just say a snare drum. You often get a clap in D sharp one, E1 says another snare, low tom, hi hat, uh, high tom, another a pedal hi hat that is hitting the pedal of the hi hat, uh, another low tom, a high o open hi hat, and so on. Uh, the most important ones that we're really concerned about today are kick in C1, snare in D1, F sharp one is a closed hi hat, A sharp one is an open hi hat, and then in the top row here, you can see we're going to have a crash in C sharp two and a ride symbol in D sharp too. You know what, why don't we just try and fill those ones out today? So here's how we're gonna go about it. As you can see, when I hit on, click on drums and there's drum rack, above that is a folder I can open called drum hits. And this contains individual drum sounds uh, that are all part of uh, the Ableton ecosystem. They're all from packs and so on. So as you can see within that folder, they're organized into type of hits, uh, everything from kicks and hi-hats and snares, which of course is what we want, through to extra special snares, timbales, uh, wood, so that's claves and guiros and other percussion instruments made of wood. There's some special effects like an alien warning. Well, that's kind of cool. And dread string F sharp. So you can find a bunch of different sounds in there. Let me just turn that off. Um, but we're gonna start today with kick. So it's actually really simple how it works. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up the kick folder there. And if I turn back on the um, the preview button, I can now listen to kicks. Now, it's a bit rough here because I've got a ton of kicks. So I'm not gonna go through all of them with you, but essentially it's as simple as this. You click on it once and you get to hear the kick. If you click on it again, you get to hear it. If you double click on it, it, it got rid of my drum rack and it put that in there as a sample instrument, which I can now play on my keyboard, but I'm not interested in that. So Command Z to bring back my empty drum rack. Now, if I wanna get, let's say I like that kick, or let's just say I like this kick. Yeah, that's kind of a good one. I'm gonna drag it from the browser into C1. And now I can hear it by either hitting play there 
or hitting C1 on my keyboard. And you can see as I, I'm on my keyboard now, as I hit C1, the play is triggered. As I hit C sharp one, you can see that one's playing D1, D sharp, E, F. I'm playing those all with my keyboard now. Um, obviously, they don't make a sound because there's no sound in there. So you can go through um, all the different kicks until you find what you like. It's, of course, depending on the style. You're looking for different kinds of sounds. I'm just going to go with this one now for ease. Now I'm looking for a snare drum, so I'll close that folder and open up my snare drum folder. And, oh, by the way, you can use the down and up arrow on your keyboard once you've clicked there, so I can just move through. Well, I kind of like that acoustic snare. So I'm going to grab that one and drag it into D1. Next, I'm going to look for... Uh, uh, a hi-hat, so I go into hi-hat, and of course in F-sharp one, I'm looking for closed hi-hats. Um, and you can see there's a bunch of things called closed HH there. I might also want to listen to some of these. But one way of sort of shortcutting it is just typing up in here the word close or closed, and you get all the closed hi-hats showing up there really quickly. That's a pretty basic one that I'm just gonna choose now. So I'll drag that into F sharp one. So now I have the bare bones of a drum kit. You can see if I play on my keyboard, C, D, and F sharp, I could play a basic drum pattern now. Um, next, I'm gonna go for an open hi-hat. So I'll just go up here, type in open, and there's a bunch of different types of hi-hats. I'm gonna grab that one. Now, of course, open hi-hats are great because you can do this kind of pattern. But anyone who's played uh, a real drum kit would know that you can't have an open hi-hat and a closed hi-hat at the same time. For instance, you couldn't do this. Because the very act of playing the closed hi-hat cuts off the sound of the open hi-hat because they're the same instrument. So you've got this cool little feature here. Um, if you click this little button here on your drum rack and then click the I-O button here, which by the way wasn't there before, now you click that, click the I-O, and you get this thing called choke. And um, you can see over on the left, over here, it tells you a bit what the choke group does. Use this chooser to select the choke group for this chain. Any chains that are in the same choke group will silence the others when triggered. This is useful for choking open hi-hats by triggering closed hi-hats. So that means all we have to do, uh, let's see, closed HH and hi-hat blue room, that's these two here. So if I put those in the same choke group, let's just call them choke group one. That now means that when I play, if I play the open hi-hat, the closed hi-hat will stop it. So before, uh, once again, I'll just take them out of that group. Now here I play the open hi-hat followed immediately by a closed hi-hat, and the, the closed hi-hat doesn't stop it. But now that they're in the same choke group, if I go, and which makes it for a more realistic experience. And so you can close the hi-hat, you can stop the open hi-hat sound, which is really kind of neat. Um, I might also, while I'm on it, get a crash symbol. So again, hit in symbol, uh, get rid of the open there and just type in the word crash, and there's all my available crashes. I'm quite partial to a 909 crash. So we look down here and it tells me in the bottom left corner that C sharp two is good for a crash symbol. So I'm gonna grab my crash in there, which means now I can or at least start a bar with a crash symbol. And of course, the last thing I want is a ride symbol in the top right corner. So there's a good ride. I'm gonna grab that one. Oop, I've lost my thing, there it is. And drag that into the, into the top right corner. And so that doesn't keep happening, I'll close that. And there is my basic drum kit that I've set up. Next thing I'm gonna do is give my kit a name. So I'll just click on it there. Uh, of course, as you know, rename command R, and I'm gonna call it Gainsler's Demo Drum Kit. And now to save it, I'll hit enter, of course. Uh, to save it, so you can actually share it with someone, you could either hit the save icon here, or if you go into the user library, I'll clear that there, go into user library, uh, this um, is a preset. 
so I could, you know what, shortcut. Into, I, basically, what I was going to say is I could drag it into there. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the save icon, which is a floppy disk from uh, my youth. Hit save, and there it automatically put it into presets, drum rack, and it's in the right place. So now if I'm doing another project and I want to use that drum kit that I, I was working on that one time, I go into my user library, which normally starts like that, open presets, open the instruments, open the drum rack, and there's my drum racks that I've saved before. Uh, there's my demo drum kit. If you needed to, you know, find this drum kit as a file on your computer to submit for an assignment, say, um, what you can do is, here's one I just created, if you right click on it and just go show in finder, it'll show up here and there it is. So if you needed to drag that into uh, something like Google Classroom, you can just take it from there. Um, let's just say you've got other sounds that you want to use in your drum kit that aren't in the Ableton Live library but you've downloaded onto your computer. Um, for instance, let's say you've gone on to uh, Google and you've typed in here free drum samples uh, and you find things like this. Sample Radar has a thousand, three, a thousand free drum samples. There's the ultimate list of free drum kits, free sample packs and so on. If you've got something like that that you um, like and you want to use, here's how to get them. So here on my Finder, if I go, I've got a directory on my computer called samples and inside that, as you can see, I've got a bunch of drum kits and other samples that I found from various websites and so on. So all I can do is I can go back into Ableton and here it says uh, add folder. If I just click on that and I go into documents, which is where I keep it, and then my particular um, folder is the samples folder. So if I go into documents and then just click on samples and click open, now you can see in Ableton samples has been added down there and if I just click on that there's the folder structure from my computer. So for instance let's say I want to find all the kick drums that I've got in here. Um, now I'm in the samples folder and I'm looking just for kicks uh, and you can see in there there's a kick, there's a kick, here's the Dr. Dre Oh no, that was a, um, a series of kicks. But here's the Dr. Dre sample kit, and this is all the kicks that are in there. Oh, it says I can't play them right now. I'm not really sure why. But Music Radar, let's try on this one. Uh, assorted hits, kicks, um, acoustic kicks. Let's turn that back on. There we go. And you can hear there's all the different kicks that I have on my computer and so on and if I was to go and type in there snare same deal music radar drum samples assorted hits snares and you can see from this particular pack that I downloaded there's a bunch of different um, uh, real sounding snare drums I hope that was useful for you and I look forward to seeing your drum kits